Nvidia's given us paper. Yet again, AMD might be giving us the Xbox Series X in a PC and there also might be uh, changing up a few things behind the scenes. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off with the report of the RTX 2060 12 gig launch that took place yesterday, or did it? According to all official reports, the 2060 12 gig did indeed come out on December 7th, and reports were saying it looks promising for cryptocurrency miners, but not so great for gamers because all of the benchmarks that are coming out are indicative that it's a it's a 2060 super in in 2021 late 2021 mind you not necessarily all that great but it doesn't have the lhr limitations that other gpus from nvidia has made so it performs relatively well for mining to the tune of 31 to 33 mega hash depending on which report you're looking at and all of these companies started promoting it zotac palette gigabyte uh, the rtx 2060 12 gig is here my friends until you go to try to buy it anywhere you go on zotax website which is exactly where they told me to learn more at and i go here and uh graphics cards no no 2060 there oh if i go to newegg there's no 2060 there if i go to amazon there's no 2060 there either there's no 2060 anywhere to be found in fact i couldn't find official pricing on this card even though it's released as of december 7th we just don't have any information nvidia paper launching yet another card but that's not even just all of it the first article i showed you talked about how it's great for cryptocurrency miners then video cards comes out and says it's a perfect card for crypto miners and then tom's hardware comes out and says oems target miners with this new card because it's not just as bad as hey there's no cards available for retail just like all the other launches, other people have been able to buy it. According to OEM reports, they're saying this will be more of a mining focused card, so HQ is not going to be doing a big media push on it. An RTX 2060 12 gig is Nvidia's mining card to push out there. Something that could actually be good and affordable for gamers is somehow going to be a non-media push to get into the hands of miners, which number one, don't need to have any sort of push in order to be able to do, but number two, it's a 2060 12, like, I don't understand what future we're living in right now. Tom's Hardware does a good job of explaining this, but the fact that it has double the amount of VRAM doesn't make it any better for mining because it doesn't have any faster memory, which is typically what you want to use for Ethereum. And yes, it's true that this is a slightly better card than others NVIDIA has launched lately because it doesn't have the light hash rate of the implementation that NVIDIA has been doing, but it just, all of the cards have been mining launches from this perspective. If you're just gonna drop ship them all the way to miners and not even release them in retail stores, or is that's kind of what a lot of people have been feeling like the situation has been in the first place. So it just feels like this didn't need to exist. Why is it 12 gigabytes of VRAM? An RTX 2060 six gig would sell just as well to miners as far as I'm aware. It would perform roughly exactly the same. In fact, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at least on the surface, nobody's giving us any information behind the scenes of why does this card exist? Why is it 12 gigs instead of six gigs? It's the same thing about, hey, NVIDIA, why'd you name it GTX 16 series? <laughs> it's an internal joke. Cool, your consumers are wondering what the heck is going on, but you won't ever tell us. So let me know what you think of the RTX 2060 12 gig down below in the comments, and I'll let you know that Gigabyte through its EEC filings is revealing that there are more GPUs coming our way. The 3070 Ti 16 gig, the 3080 12 gig, as well as an RX 6500 XT getting through on the EEC filings from Gigabyte, which is just the preliminary reports of like hardware that they're gonna release. And so that should mean that it might come out sometime in the near future, which is what we're expecting from AMD on their 4800S desktop kit. This is very similar to the 4700S desktop kit that has come out recently, which is actually based on the PlayStation 5's SOC. So it has Zen 2 CPU with the integrated GPU disabled, but it uses the VRAM that's on the motherboard to supply to the CPU. This one, however, the 4800S as opposed to the 4700S is likely at least rumored to be based on the Xbox 
Xbox Series X SoC as opposed to the PlayStation 5 one. So with this one, it might be actually slightly faster. It's expected that this will go on sale sometime in the beginning of 2022, and it will come bundled with an RX 6600 power color GPU when it does inevitably go on sale, probably not to the US market, but somewhere else. Would you buy a repurposed console as your PC? I'm curious, let me know in those comments. And I'm gonna let you know about the hottest tech deals that are available on the internet right now, okay? We got more laptop deals. We had several yesterday, but we've got the ROG Zephyrus 14 coming back into the deal lineup. This one, however, is the 1440p display model, 120 hertz, going for only 1250 right now. It's $300 off. It's got a Ryzen 950-900HS plus an RTX 3060 for 1250. That's a gosh dang good deal. In case you need some storage, Sabrent has both their one terabyte and two terabyte drives over on Amazon for the lowest price that they've been in quite some time. The one terabyte version is going for only $110. That's one terabyte of PCI Express 4.0 TLC storage. That's gosh dang good. And the two terabytes going for $245.64. Again, another great deal on that. And Bitcoin, no longer a great deal because it's time for crypto stonks. It's kind of green in the market all around. Bitcoin up past $50,000 yet again, up 2.68% on the day. Ethereum up 1.5% to be at 42.85 and Dogecoin up 1.6% to sit at 17.8 cents. Meme stonks also increasing a little bit. GameStop up 4.6% to sit at 174.91 and AMC up 6.35% to be at 30.64. Somebody in the comments yesterday was like, hey, this AMC you keep talking about, is that AMC the TV channel or is that AMC the movie theaters? And it's the movie theaters that we're talking about. The AMC TV channel is traded under a different stock. It's AMC X as opposed to AMC. It's slightly different, all right? But let's keep on the crypto train because Ubisoft is finally launching its NFT platform with Ghost Recon and they're calling it Ubisoft Courts when you can buy digits, which is the NFTs that are in there. And the digits will be in-game items like Get all of the microtransactions that have ever existed on a Ubisoft game. That's exactly what's happening on Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which it's not really a whole novel implementation considering the fact that microtransactions for digital assets in games have been done for years at this point, and it's not necessarily a novel implementation as it stands right now, especially since it's just being tied down to one game. But one of the promises of blockchain technology and NFTs is that this potential could allow for cross transactional or cross game versions of those in-game items. So if you buy something like a gun skin in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, that could potentially transfer over to any other Ubisoft property, or if they allow it to transfer outside of their blockchain ecosystem to other video games, if that ever comes to fruition, which has been like one of the touted technologies of why we need blockchain. But I honestly, like game developers probably could have implemented this without blockchain and them doing this just feels like they're going to try to get more microtransaction money out of you or they're going to charge a higher price for all of the items that you're now going to buy because it's not just in one game because then you'd be cutting the revenue source so they're going to offer it more expensively so that they're covering the sales that they would lose in all of the other games. I just I don't see Ubisoft's motivation for wanting to offer something that's better for the consumer without also charging more money for it. And I just, what's what's the potential technological advantage for Ubisoft to develop this besides the fact that they can potentially cash in on some crypto craze right now? You guys debate that down below in the comments while I get a couple quick articles out there. Sony's gonna be stopping the production on a ZVE-10 camera due to chip shortages that are going on right now. The Hubble Space Telescope was in a coma for a little bit now it's back up and running just in time for it to see the James Webb Space Telescope scope, telescope scope come up and take over its spot. Discord wants you to take the spot of paying people now offering potential premium memberships that are going to lock certain channels on Discord uh, servers behind paywalls so that you could pay the creator. Discord's going to take 10% and then it makes it so that you get exclusive access and that is going to be rolling out slowly as things progress. What's also progressing is RGB technology, all right? 
right? You got an iPhone or an Android. Do you have one of those pleb ones like an, a Pixel 6 that doesn't have RGB? Well, now, thanks to Razer, you can have an RGB fan slapped onto the back of that bad boy. If you get the Apple version, it's MagSafe technology, which is absolutely beautiful. You can cool that bad boy down with a 6400 RPM fan that spins on the back. And while it may mount with magnet technology on the back of your iPhone, in case you actually want to power the RGB and all of the fan, you have to connect the, a USB-C connector to it. So you have to be plugged in in case you want to use it, which makes sense because your phone would only get hot while you're in active gaming sessions of gamer fury. And that would, you would need to be plugged in. That makes sense, I guess. But it's $60 over on Razer's website in case you want to go pick that up. We'll leave links in the video description for that. And AMD might be leaving TSMC slightly for Samsung because there's new reports coming out from JP Morgan that Samsung might be producing AMD's next generation Chromebook chips based on their four nanometer technology, which kind of makes sense, especially as AMD and Samsung are solidifying their partnership, especially when it comes to the next generation Exynos SOC that they're supposed to be releasing for the upcoming Samsung phones. So it could just be part of that agreement that they're going to work together to have AMD's GPUs in Samsung's phones. And then AMD is going to use Samsung fabrication facility for some of the parts that they really don't care. They're not high margin. So who cares about Chromebooks? Yeah, you can take our four nanometer Chromebook thing that just helps it so that we don't have to spend so much money at TSMC. Thank you, Samsung. And thank you for watching this episode of Hot News. It's going to be the end for me. I'm going to be out of here. I will see you tomorrow for another episode of Hot News, my friends. And if this episode came out on time, that means that our editor's power did not go out or get stolen, which means I didn't jinx the entire situation. See you tomorrow for breakfast.